Hey guys and welcome back to my channel and welcome to part two of the how to design a crochet pattern video series. Today we get to get into the fun stuff because we've already planned out our pattern and what we want it to look like which is all included in part one so if you haven't watched that already head over to part one and give that a watch before you start watching this video but in today's video we get to get our hook and our yarn out and start crocheting so I am going to be using the Lion brand hometown USA yarn I don't know what color this is I should really find out one moment okay I'm back this is the Los Angeles tan colorway in the Lion Brand Hometown USA, as I mentioned. It is classed as a super bulky weight yarn in regards to ply for us Aussies. I don't know. I think it would be classed as like a 16 ply maybe. Let me look that up as well. <laughs> Okay, so I was right. So this is classed as a 16 ply yarn. So pretty chunky, but it's great because it means that the pattern is gonna work up super quickly, which I love. We all love a quick project. So this part of the pattern designing process is all just a lot of trial and error. This is where I will now sit down and do up a swatch of the stitch pattern that I plan on using. I decide on what hook size I want to use. I'm starting off with an eight millimeter. The yarn does recommend a nine millimeter, but I'm gonna start off with an eight and see how we go because I don't want it to have, you know, like be too holy. So we're gonna go with an eight at this stage, but yeah, it's basically just a whole lot of trial and error. So I am going to now go ahead and crochet up a swatch of the stitch pattern and then I'll come back to you guys and we'll go from there. All right, so I have already decided I wanna change the stitch that I'm doing. I've done not even one and a half rows and I'm already not happy with this stitch that I've chosen. So I originally wanted to do a back post half double crochet because I thought that would be a perfect stitch. It wouldn't be too holy and it would give me some beautiful ribbing. But now that I've actually started to do it, because the yarn is so chunky, it makes it quite hard to get in and around the post. So I've decided now I'm gonna give the back post double crochet a go. And when I say double crochet, that is a treble crochet for all you UK term followers. Um, I follow US terms. So if you hear me talking about stitches, please know that I am talking in US terms. So I am going to unpull this little swatch now and start again. And I'm gonna go in with a back post double crochet and see if I like that better. All right, so I have done up a little bit of a swatch using the back post double crochet and I do like it a lot better. As you can see, you get this beautiful ribbing effect. However, this hook is too small. I need to go up a hook size, so I'm gonna go grab my nine millimeter and we're gonna do that all over again. So I have finished my little swatch with my nine millimeter hook and I am a lot happier with that hook size. So that's the one I'm gonna go with, I think. Um, this is what the swatch looks like so far. Let me try and focus for you guys. As you can see, the ribbing is absolutely stunning. I love the chunkiness of this yarn and I love the squish factor. It's gonna be such a nice jumper to wear. Well, I think anyway, you know, I'm biased, but whatever. So now what I'm going to do is start on the actual jumper. Now that I've established the stitch pattern I wanna use and the hook size that I wanna use, I can start on the actual finished product. So, what that involves is basically when I design a pattern, I just make it in my size. I'll talk to you more about this later on in the video series, but when I design a pattern, I just make it in my size. I wear a size small in most things, and then the rest of the sizes get made off of that size, but I'll go into more depth later on in the video series in regards to that once we have finished the 
final product. I also established um, while making up this swatch that if I do just front post double crochet instead of back post, it's a lot easier on the wrist. So, and you still get the exact same effect. It's just backwards, obviously. So instead of going around the back post, you're going around the front post and it gives you the exact same effect, but it saves you having to go in and around. You can just go like that. So it's a lot easier on your wrist and I have a dodgy wrist. So I'm always looking out for you guys. So I am going to go ahead now and chain up the body. So in part one, we went through this drawing, which is my rough sketch, very rough sketch of the finished jumper. Now what we're going to do is start from the side. So when I cast on, we'll actually be starting from the side of the jumper and that is purely because we want the ribbing going down ways like that. So obviously with crochet, the ribbing is worked across like this. So we crochet across like that but the ribbing, we want it to be going down that way. So we're going to be casting on at the side of the jumper. So our jumper will look like that. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. You'll be able to see what I'm talking about as we go on. But what I'm gonna do now is pull this swatch undone and we're gonna cast up the body of the jumper. So the way that I decide how many chains I start with is purely just to measure it on myself. So I have now finished chaining to what I think is a good enough length and I'm now going to hold the top of the chains on my shoulder where our shoulder seam will be and I'm going to drape it over the front of me to measure the length. Now that looks like a pretty decent length on me that's pretty much where I want it to sit. I want it to be, these are high waisted jeans, so these are not sitting on my hips. My hips are about here, but I do want the jumper to end at about my hip. So I can see that that length of chains pretty much sits on my hip there, which is where I want my jumper to sit. So I'm happy with this amount of chains for now. I will start crocheting and then We'll see what happens. I might end up pulling it undone. I'm sure I will probably end up pulling it undone many, many times throughout this process. But that is just what happens when you're designing a pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead now and do quite a few rows of the front post double crochet and then I'll come back to you guys and show you what it's looking like. Alrighty, time for an update, guys. It's been quite a while since I have filmed anything on this jumper and the pattern designing process. So I'm excited to show you guys where I'm up to. As you can see, I've almost finished this panel. So this will either be the front or the back panel. They're both going to be exactly the same. So I do still need to make another one of these. I've got a row and a half left until I've finished this panel so I'm almost done and then as I mentioned I will make another one exactly the same. I also just wanted to mention that we ended up changing my hook size again. We are up to a 12 millimeter crochet hook and the reason for this is I found with the nine millimeter that I was using it worked okay but the fabric itself once it was crocheted up was really stiff. So it didn't have nice drape. It was really stiff. It was like you were wearing a cardboard box pretty much. So I have decided to go up to a 12 millimeter hook and I'm really happy with how it is turning out. The stitch definition on this jumper is beautiful. As you can see, the ribbing there is gorgeous. I absolutely love how it's turning out so far. I cannot wait for it to be finished so I can wear it. But I just thought I would give you guys a bit of an update on where I'm at. So obviously this is the top of the jumper. These will be seamed across here and up the neck here um, at the shoulders. This section here is obviously the neck. So when... I should have probably mentioned this before, but when you sketch up a design, you obviously need to have a think about what stitches you're going to use and what techniques you're going to use in order to achieve your desired shape. So 
When I drew up my sketch, I knew that I wanted to have a raised neck and I knew that I wanted it to be included in the panel. I didn't want to have to seam anything around the neck. I just wanted it to be like a continuation of the front and back panel, which is what I've done here. So all I've done to achieve this raised neck look is because I started here. So this is where I started crocheting and we've been working in rows going up this way. Once I got to here, all I did was chained an extra, I think it was three or four stitches and completed these rows with an extra three stitches. So then once I finished the next section and I was happy with the width of it, I then just went back down to completing the three less stitches for the shoulder section. So anyway, I just wanted to add that in there. So when you are designing something and when you are drawing it up, um, at the very beginning of the pattern designing process, you obviously do want to think about how you're going to achieve the shape. It may be that you need to include some increases, some decreases. You may need to do something like what I've done here with the extra chains to create that extra length, um, whatever it may be. But obviously you just need to think about that before you start crocheting. So to give you guys a little bit of an idea of what it is looking like so far, this is obviously what the front will look like. So as you can see, the raised neck area sits up a little bit higher on the neck and then the shoulder seams will be seamed here and up the side of the neck, as I've mentioned. And then lengthwise, it sits about there. So I am absolutely loving it. I love when you complete like a decent enough amount of the pattern that you can actually start to see what it's going to look like. And I am so excited for this. I think it's going to be absolutely beautiful. Um, I also wanted to mention that this jumper will most likely need to be blocked. I'm not much of a blocker myself. I don't usually block my garments purely because they don't usually really need it. Um, but due to the nature of this stitch, I find that it does naturally want to um, condense that way. So obviously I want it to be like I want the ribbing to be really nice and visible. So I want it to be stretched out a little bit like that. So I have decided that I will probably block this at the end. And I will show you guys how I go about blocking my items when we get to that point. So later on in the video series, but I just thought I would mention that as well. Just another thing you have to think about when you're designing. The reason I say that you need to start thinking about it when you're designing a pattern is because you need to figure out when or in what part of the process you want to block your pattern. So because I am doing this in panels and then seaming them together, I want to block my panels before I seam them together because you can then make sure that they are exactly the same size. It's going to make it easier when you're seaming them together and it also just makes it easier to block when it's in parts like this, if that makes sense, um, rather than trying to block an entire jumper, which can be pretty tricky, especially if it is in a bulky weight yarn like this because it's just a lot of yarn to deal with. Something else I have decided um, along the way of designing this jumper is that I think I will offer this pattern in two different yarn weights. So what I mean by that is obviously this jumper here that I'm making at the moment is made using a super bulky weight, about a 16 ply yarn, um, which can number one, it can be quite expensive and number two, I understand that not everyone may have access to a super bulky weight yarn because it's not as common as, you know, like your eight plies and your 10 plies. And also just the fact that not everyone likes a chunky garment. I personally absolutely love a chunky garment. I love a chunky yarn, but I totally understand that that is not for everybody. And I want to make my patterns as accessible and as universal I suppose as I can. I want as many people as possible to be able to enjoy them. So I have decided that once I finish designing this I am going to make it up in an Aran weight yarn so something a little bit more 
consumer friendly, I suppose. And that way, no matter what yarn you have access to, you should still be able to make this pattern, which is great as a designer because the more people that are actually able to source the materials for your pattern and are able to make your pattern, the more sales you're going to make or the more downloads you're going to get if you're offering a free pattern. So just think about that when you are designing your patterns. I have mentioned that a little bit back in part one about choosing yarns and things and making sure that they are accessible to people. But yeah, I just thought I would throw that in there as well because I am going to be doing two different versions of this jumper. So anyway, I know I'm rambling on at the moment guys, but I just wanted to throw all my thoughts in there because obviously this video series is about my designing process and what goes on, on in my head when I'm designing. So I'm just going to tell you guys everything that's going on up here as it happens. So anyway, I'm going to stop rambling and that wraps up part two of the how to design a crochet pattern video series. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure you go and subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications so you will be notified of all my future videos, including part three, part four, part five, however many of these videos I end up making of the how to design a crochet pattern video series. Anyway guys, that's all from me. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in part three.